What's up, Ella Ponset from Creative Sound, Creative University. I'm doing this video because I realized I haven't did one since six years ago, 2016, in Studio One Three. We are now in Studio One Five, and so things change just a little bit. So right here we have some simple chord progression here, and I want to show you how side chain works inside of Studio One Five. So if we was to go and look for I don't know some type of kick, and it 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 could be any kick. Actually, it could be anything. Anything can side chain. And let me explain briefly why I'm looking for a kick. Okay, that sounds good. So briefly, briefly, what's happening here is that side chain is used for several reasons. Side chain is used to duck out a sound where where, where you know things come in and out volume wise. And also, we use side chain to clean up things too, like bass and kicks. We use the side chain feature to help us duck out. Basically, that's all it is, pretty much. But we use it for different reasons. We use it as an effect, and we also use it as a as a point of mixing technique, so to speak, to help the kick punch through the mix a lot better. Because you know, the bass and the kick shares the same fre frequency most of the times. So real quick, let's just go ahead and do this. Now, back in two, 2016, there was a couple of steps you go through in order to make this happen, but you no longer have to do that. So let's do this. And it could be a in virtual instrument if you want, but in this case, I'm just using a the audio from somewhere in the browser, right? And I'll be using the bass coming from the loop cloud play if you want this this is in the description's affiliate link all right so basically for my kick it is very important that you label everything that's what i try to do in my sessions as a matter of fact i'm gonna hit shift enter i am working from a mac so if i mention any key commands please bear with me if you're not using a mac but basically all you have to do is search for a compressor and I want to say that most compressors work maybe maybe not yeah I want I want to say most compressors work because studio one has this thing at the top where like the header of a plugin these options are most most of the time available so let's verify that so if I go to the base oh no that's not the case never mind that it just depends on what it is oh these are instruments so say i go for eq you can also do it with the eq as well but i use eq differently when i do side chain and i guess i can show y'all that too since we talking about side chaining so first things first let's go with the compressor and basically and i'm gonna show you why it's important to label your stuff um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put the compressor on the bass. No, sorry. I'm going to put it on the the chords. And what we're going to do here is activate sidechain. And we want the insert or the input or, yeah, the input. We want the signal from the kick. That's how we're going to say that to come in through this compressor to affect these chords, these beautiful chords that we created. We cheated, we use a scale of two, right? So we're gonna turn side chain up. I'm gonna exaggerate so you can hear what's going on. All right, so basically if you understand how a compressor works, basically, the release is how long it takes for a compressor to react again, you know, do its thing. And you can shorten the release if you don't want the, the compressor to work as long. And the attack is just the opposite. It, it allows the meat, the punch to come through and you can soften it. So it's like a curve, just like you see here. So this is kind of like your attack. So you can control that, dial it back, make it, make it shorter, make it softer, whatever. And then your threshold is where things cap at. You bring things down, you make the loud things softer and the softer things a little louder. And that's kind of how this works. 
and then your ratio it's kind of like input gain but it's not it's it's just a ratio of that signal going into the compressor so just be careful so this is exaggerating right short of release but of course we wouldn't we wouldn't do that we just right that's 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 kind of what we would do same deal on a kick i mean a bass i'm going to mute this same deal i'm gonna take this compressor actually what i could do is copy and paste that onto the bass but i'm not going to do that i'm going to start all over again just in case you guys missed that and we're going to go i'm sorry not the not the eq give me the compressor thank you very much let's go for the compressor it's going to bring that on here we're going to start again just in case you guys are following it's like wait i didn't get it okay so what we're going to do here we're going to look for kick because we want the kick to come in and affect the signal so real quick you put the compressor on the signal you want to duck and then you find the signal whether it's coming from the kick it's coming from drums like a full drum set or whatever sound you you wish actually to come in and affect the signal so you look for it and that's why you say kick because otherwise you have a bunch of things in here and trust me when you start building on this track there'll be a lot of stuff happening a lot of names and then you'll forget what's what you know so if you if you're trying to do it this way this is how you do it this way so so basically now in this situation the kick and the bass kind of share the same frequency space if you will and basically what we want to do if we don't want to nudge out as much of the bass we can do we could do it just like this right we could do it just like that Now, the cool thing about this is that this kick will take all of these different side chain situations. As you can see, two different compressors on the the chords here. And then we got one on the bass. And then the kick is just taking it. You know, the, the, it's sending the signal. And this is what this represents. Also, you can, you know, double click on these and the, the, respect, the, the, the respective, the respectable. <laughs> plug in the plugin that's associated to what whichever one will come in and you can also adjust the send levels i think that's for the first one see nothing is happening there you can also reverse this here so it's like you sending a signal from the kick and regardless of the levels so you go in and mix this here you say like the kick is too loud you bring it down or you don't want to kick it out you just want the bass to just take effect whatever the kick is doing i could change up the kick pattern like i say it can be a audio signal it can be a signal coming from a virtual instrument it really doesn't matter it it don't need to be a kick it could be something totally different and this is what's happening here so this is the cool thing about this and if you don't want this to happen then turn it off and then act as a post fade so when you turn this on pre fader it means that everything that come in before if i turn that off bring it up a little bit So you have like like multiple options. You can do whatever you want in terms of that. So typically, you know, I will leave it right there somewhere. 
and depending on what I do, you know, I, I have the control of how much of the side chain I want and I can dial back some. It's kind of the same, it's kind of the same concept pretty much. So it just it kind of depends on what you want to hear, what you want to see or where you are. Like you could just go real quick and just adjust this, right? So I'm going to turn this other one back on, my course. If I want it to be a stream, turn that on. And when you do it this way, you can also, like, the only way to change the levels is just by, you know, doing that. But when you do it this way, this means that you have a steady signal coming in at all times without whatever you do here in the fader. So whatever you do here in the fader will not affect how much of this you sending because remember this is like a pre-fade or pre-send. So it's just gonna always, I may have gotten that backwards, but I, I, I wanna say this is a pre everything coming in before yeah it's definitely a pre it's definitely a pre because post fade means that whatever i do here will affect what's going on here in, in, in the uh the compressors if you're wondering how to get this to just long press on that and boom you can see the game reduction happen in real time and you can also see the game reduction happening here on the actual channel it's yellow lines that are like reacting so you can see what's going on all right so let me show you like this eq thing you like wait you put an eq on there and you say you can use that as well so okay let's do something interesting here i'm going to chop the kick up and move things around just like that get that out of there boom boom get out of here get out of here we're going to make this kick follow the bass line. So I got a staccato bass here or 808 bass. Right. So if you're listening to this in headphones, you can kind of hear that they are both of these frequencies are fighting each other. So this is a good example. So I'm going to grab an EQ here and just throw it here because i think what i want to do is adjust the 808 to respect the kick that's punching through so what i would do here is say i want this to come from the kick so i can see the kick and i'm not side chaining as i explained a few seconds ago with the compressor this side chain with the EQ is just so I can see the signals come in and I can make my EQ adjustments accordingly. So, you see that? So if I turn side chain it off, and let me see if I can get back what we saw before. Yeah, something like that, right? So the blue represents the bass or the 808. If I turn side chain on, the purplish, line represents the kick so now i can say uh well let's make an adjustment and you know what i mean i can cut back some of that bass so it won't fight so much and it'll clear up the mud so to speak you know something like that Probably adjust the kick some. And that way the kick can shine. And this is a a mix technique that I use oftentimes. Uh, so I can see both at the same time. And it's like a cheat sheet or cheat code or whatever. I can see what's going on. So that is how I'm using sidechain with EQ. So I hope that this helped you guys. This is... <laughs> The, the newer version, Studio One 5 version, 2022. This is the easy way of sidechain. Just remember, put the compressor on the 
the signal that you want to receive anything from to affect that that channel. Just remember that. And then you turn on side chain and you look for that source. And that's pretty much it. Once again, I'm Ellup, Creative Sound, Creative University. Remember, music is art. You the artist. Paint your picture. Stay creative without rules. Stay tuned on for all of the live shows that we do weekly. All right. See y'all soon. Oh, and also remember to join us on Discord, creative.art slash Discord. This is where we building a community. Yes, indeed. See you soon.